Hey there, I'm Josh Sokol, the CEO and creator of SimpleRisk. In this video, we will take a deeper look at the configurations available in SimpleRisk. Some of this might not make much sense until we cover the specific functionality that it applies to in layer videos. Also, please note that the configure menu and all of the options within it are only available to users with the administrator role. Starting with the settings page, this is where SimpleRisk general settings can be found. At the top of the general tab, you'll find settings pertaining to the user interface. By default, only risk set as considered for project in the management review process will be displayed under plan projects. Checking this option will allow you to plan projects for all risks. This setting will automatically verify assets when they're tied to risk. Without it, assets will go into an unverified state where an administrator must verify for them to be displayed for all users. This ensures consistency with your asset naming conventions and reduces duplicates. This setting relates to the governance side of SimpleRisk, where you can create policy or control exceptions. The idea by checking this is that if an exception is changed, then it needs to be reapproved. This setting forces users to select a risk mapping for any risk that is created in the system. When you take actions in the system, the system will display either a green or red dialog box in the top right corner. You can always click to dismiss it, but this timeout determines how long it will be displayed before it disappears. The default value section is for how SimpleRisk manages things by default. Here you see the default language used by the system. Individual users can change their language settings to be different than the system as well. Here we can set the default time zone used by the system. We support a ton of different date formats in Simporis. You can set the default risk score, though I will note that this is planned for a bit of an overhaul in the future release. Here we can set the maximum length for a risk subject. Because you have the ability to create custom audit statuses in Simporis, we add the ability to set your default initiate and closed audit status. This determines what the status will be set at, either when you kick off an audit test or which status determines that a test has been closed and should no longer be displayed as an active audit. You can use a different currency symbol if you don't want to use dollars. You can set the default asset valuation applied when an asset is created. Set the default role assigned to users when they are created. Set the default current and desired maturity levels assigned when a control is created. Select whether the next review date will be calculated based on the inherent risk or residual risk. In other words, will the risk be reviewed next based on what the risk is or what it could be? The SimPorce base URL is a security measure. It ensures that URLs generated by the system, such as for communications with itself, will go to a known location. If you ever change the domain for your SimPorce instance, this must be changed as well. Finally, we have the risk appetite level. Think of this as the line between risks you consider mitigated to acceptable level and those that require further mitigations. It's used for our risk appetite report. Back at the top of the settings page, you'll find the file upload tab. This is where we configure the settings for anything that uploads a file to SimpleRisk. For security purposes, we restrict the allowed file types. It includes some common types for things like PDFs, Excel spreadsheets, and text files by default. But if you get a message that a file you're trying to upload is not supported, it needs to be added here. This is where we define the maximum size of file uploads. For an on-premise deployment, increasing the size means updating the configuration for both PHP and MySQL. For hosted deployments, you would need to contact support to determine if a larger size is supported for your deployment. Regardless, larger files mean the potential to fill up the disk space associated with your database much faster. This is where mail can be configured for a SimpleSource instance. A hosted LE customer should not change the majority of these settings because they're pre-configured for our AWS environment. The highlighted settings are things you can change without any issues. The prepend is useful for identifying which environment you are receiving messages from if you have more than one SimPorus instance. The from name is what the receiver will see as the name the message is coming from. The reply to name and reply to email is where replies to the message will be sent. As a hosted customer, if you would like to change the from email, this is possible, but you would need to submit a support ticket. We would then work with you to configure AWS to be able to send emails on behalf of the desired alternate domain. 
On-premise customers can change this as long as their transport agent allows sending from this address. On-premise customers can use either SMTP or SEMmail as their transport agent. With SMTP, they can configure the hosted and port that the message will be routed to. If authentication is enabled, an on-premise customer can also provide credentials for routing the emails. Hosted customers, however, should not modify this information or it'll break email functionality. If you'd ever just like to send a test email to see if it is coming through, you can use this option. The Backups tab provides the ability to create automatic backups of the Simpris files and database. It runs on a predetermined schedule and automatically removes backup files after a defined period of time. Hosted customers do not need to enable this functionality as we use AWS database snapshots to automatically capture daily backups. The Security tab contains settings for how security is handled in Simpris. These values determine how long user sessions are valid for before a user is automatically logged out to prevent session brute forcing attacks. The session activity timeout controls how many idle seconds a user may have before they're logged out. New activity will essentially reset the clock on this value. The session absolute timeout controls how long a session may be active before a user is forced to reauthenticate, regardless of their level of activity. On the right side, we have several options for the security settings of the system. The content security policy will add a CSP header along with all responses from the server to the client. Functionality in Simpris frequently changes faster than this value gets updated and enabling it can break things. Below that are two settings for SSL certificate checking. The first enables checks for the Simpris API. This is fine for hosted customers since we use a CA signed certificate but may need to be disabled if you're an on-premise customer and use a self-signed certificate. The second is for connections to external websites. Uncheck this if you're using some sort of proxy that breaks SSL. The proxy section is for on-premise customers who want to send all traffic through a proxy server for monitoring. It shouldn't be used for hosted customers. The final settings tab is for debugging. Checking this will send debug statements into the Apache error log. This should only be used to troubleshoot an issue as it'll significantly slow down a Simpris instance due to the file system writes. The content menu is an extension of the import export extra. It provides you with one-click installers for common frameworks and assessments. We will discuss this in more detail when we talk about frameworks and controls in another video. The risk and threat catalog page is where you can configure the risk mapping and threat mapping values. These come from the secure controls framework by default and you can add your own risks and threats as well. We will discuss configure risk formula in more detail when we discuss risk management in another video. In short, this is where we configure how risk scoring is calculated in Simpris. The configure review settings page is where we set how often we should review risks of different levels. Our goal here is for higher level risks to be reviewed more frequently than lower level risks. The Add and Remove Values page will provide a dropdown of most of the common fields in Simpris to choose from. You can then add new values into the dropdown list, edit the existing values, or remove values from the dropdown list. There's a whole section on users, roles, and responsibilities coming up in another video, so I'll skip over these for now. Redefine naming conventions is similar to Add and Remove Values, but specifically for things where there's a fixed number of available options to choose from. This includes the mitigation effort and control maturity, but it gives you the ability to change the values displayed for each of them. To make it easier to value assets, they are divided into 10 buckets of value. These buckets can be dollar values or name values. The asset valuation page gives you the ability to modify these values. The automatic asset valuation section at the top will split them into 10 equal buckets based on minimum and maximum value. Through personal experience, I found that a more exponential range is better than the equally spaced buckets. Reality is, is that it doesn't matter if it's a dollar pencil or a hundred dollar monitor. The value is still trivial in the grand scheme of things and would take a lot of them to create a higher level of risk. When performing qualitative analysis, having a broad range is enough for prioritization and is far easier to estimate. The delete risk page is the only way to remove risk from the system. Otherwise, your only available action would be to close the risk. Generally speaking, we do not recommend removing risk from the system as it creates activity that could potentially come into question during an audit. 
The audit trail page provides a list of activities taking place in the system. This includes things like risk creation, user login and logout, etc. You can filter results based on a time range, and with the import export extra, you have the ability to export results to a spreadsheet. The import export extra also gives you an import export menu. Here you can both import or export risks, assets, asset groups, controls, users, template groups, and control tests. We will walk through how this works in more detail when we talk about controls in a layer video. This functionality is incredibly useful for getting new data into Simporis, like if you wanted to import a spreadsheet containing penetration testing results as new RIFs, or when batch editing existing data, like when a user leaves and you want to reassign all their risks to someone new. I'm going to skip over active assessments as it contains sensitive information for the keys used for assessments I've sent out. These keys enable a user to access the assessment directly and modify the values. You can use this page to delete active assessments. The artificial intelligence page is where you go to input your Anthropic API key and provide answers to contextual questions about your organization. Data entered here will be sent to Anthropic in order to provide the AI-generated results in the artificial intelligence menu. The Extras page displays a list of all of the extras that are available in Simporis. Here you'll see whether the extra is enabled or disabled for your instance. Clicking on No will give you the ability to enable the extra. Clicking on Yes will bring you to the configuration page for the selected extra. The Announcements page does not get regularly updated and can be safely ignored. We will likely look to remove this in a future release in favor of a notification system. On-premise customers will use the register and upgrade page to register their Simporis instance. It is where they will go to back up their database and perform a one-click upgrade to the next release. Hosted customers can use this function to download a backup of their database before making major changes, but we also do daily snapshots for them. Scrolling down on the page, you will see a list of each extra and their status. This includes the version information and whether it is possible to activate them. Every on-premise customer should make sure to validate that their health check is showing with all green check marks. Red X's for an on-premise instance are a sign of potential issues. Hosted customers may see red X's from time to time. There are typically nothing to worry about. For example, typically we wait at least two weeks after a new release goes live before upgrading a customer. This will show a red X for your Simpress version information, along with red X's for the Simpress extras. The final saying menu option is the About page. This page just displays information about the current and latest version of the Simpress application and database. This concludes our video on the configuration of Simpress. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.